This is a 9,000 RPM budget build engine and I'm going to be going over a couple things in this video. One, the parts to put it together versus some of the alternatives, how to keep the budget and the cost down lower and two, the tools that used to put this together. A lot of people are wondering after stage one, what tools do I need to get into that game and step up on my engine building? So that's where I'm going with this video coming up right after my Tillotson and a Predator, both 212 cc engines. Doing an intro, I'm doing an intro, doing an intro now, isn't it neat? Doing an intro, cause I'm doing an intro, I'm doing an intro now, look at my feet. All right, wasn't that just fantastic? 9,000 RPM. Let's be a little bit more accurate with this. At 9,200 RPM, I blew it up the first time. At 9,500 RPM, I blew it up the second time. And at 9,300 RPM, I blew it up the third time. As I blew it up each time and I was learning the engine and I was learning the build and I was learning what to do with what parts, I got help along the way. I want to give a big, big special thank you and a shout out right here in the video, Childish Concepts, childishconcepts.com. There's the hair. Where, how did that get in there mid-speech? That is a big hair. Where did this even come from? It just like went into my mouth and my eye at the same time. Big Childish Concepts Facebook page I've been following and they have some incredible builds, over 30 horsepower on flagship builds for engines similar like this. They do uh, probably the best bang for your buck if you're purchasing a built engine from ChildishConcepts.com. No, I am not sponsored. I just got a lot of help and it was really nice every time that I had something come up with the engine and I went online, it's like, all right, this is where I'm at with the build so far. It's been a few months as I'm doing this and I got help with it. Huge shout out and thank you, childishconcepts.com. Actually had really good customer service as well. I did order from them because they also had some of the best prices for some of the things that I ordered. Thank you very much. Let's get this video underway, laying out the parts to build one of these engines, put them together. So here I am with a list of things. I'm just gonna read through my list of the parts and then I'm gonna go through them so you can see what it is that I'm talking about for anybody who wants to make a list really quick and easily. A cam, this is a CS Grind cam. Flywheel is a PVL flywheel. Chromoly push rods are 5.340 in size. I've got a billet rod that is the stock length for the billet rod that's in there. It's not a stroker, it is a 3.308 billet rod. Valve springs, 22 pounds. I do have .060 shims for the valve springs. Give them a little bit more uh, tension than 22 pounds. A jet set, the primary ones that I like to use was 120 main with a 38 low speed. Header, one inch. Muffler, small hole RLV. Catch can plus air filter. This is a 350 milliliter catch can. Air filter, 50 millimeter air filter. PWK carb, 24 millimeter. Timing key, eight degrees for your flywheel. Manifold, this is just a uh, aluminum manifold, aluminum manifold. Champion rockers, one to one. Hoses, you've got uh, your vinyl hose with additives to make sure it doesn't break down. And straight barb coupler, a brass tail barb coupler, and a 90 degree tail barb coupler in brass. Some hose clamps. A 7 16 inch bolt by 34, a spark plug, NGK. What kind of NGK spark plug, mind you? Oh, look at that, BKR5ES. 16 inch O-ring, some zip ties, and the cable. Bink, well that was quick. Got all the parts lined up right here. I'm gonna go over them quickly. Why did I choose some of these parts over some of the others? Before you begin your build, there are gonna be a few things that you want to make sure you know before you get this far into it. P, 
piston ring alignment. Make sure you're familiar with your engine's piston ring alignment needs. I am going to be doing with this build a mild or halfway piston polish. If I just keep grinding away and grinding away and grinding away, I'm going to have to put a stroker crank in this one, giving you a larger displacement. We're not even going there at this point. We want to make sure that our compression stays high, so we're going to polish that just about halfway. Governor removal. When you're going this far into a build, the governor removal is actually pretty simple. Oil sensor removal, tap the hole properly, 7 16 inch hat tap, and I'll cover that with the tools. Cam clearancing. With different types of engines, you need to know what clearancing you're going to be doing. This particular build needs clearancing, so you'll have to bust out a digital caliper, measure your original cam, for its clearancing on the high points, and you're gonna to have to do some clearancing between the lobes. Warning, cam may require clearancing between lobes when using a billet rod. What that means, when you're using a billet rod, which can be thicker at certain points than your stock rod, it can hit as it's moving up and down, and you'll have to do clearancing. These are the lobes here. You'll have to clearance between those lobes. Carb tuning. This carburetor is great at tuning. You don't need to know everything about it. However, it is really gonna help once you understand how to tune a carburetor to get your engine up to the next level. Bink, now where does the future hold of where can you go next? This build in particular does not have any crankshaft balancing, something you really should be taking a look at once you go over 8,000 RPM. Port work and polishing. There is no port work that's done. Not only is this a budget engine build, but it's a very fast engine build. A high compression head. This doesn't use a high compression head. A high compression head is gonna come in here where your valves are and it's gonna have some of that area filled in. Something, something, something. I'm actually not gonna get into that more, but just note that you can pick up some high compression heads for around $50, bring your engine up to that next level. Some of them claim that it's an instant one horsepower or more boost to your engine build. Pretty nice stuff. Carb tuning is the last thing. Yes, I have it over here, I have it over there. The better you can tune your carburetor, the better atomization that you can get out of your build, the more you're gonna be getting out of your build in total. Over here, I have some of the parts that uh, I will not be using, but alternatives. I touched base earlier. This little catch can right here, I've seen go for about $30. This catch can setup with a breather filter, with a bunch of adapters, with a tube. This was all about $23 to $25 totaled, whereas this catch can itself was about $30. So the oil catch can does help with uh, breathing. I wanted this engine to be able to breathe. I wanted this crankcase to be able to breathe, which is why I used this guy right here. He's a 90 degree tail barb for the catch can coming out of the crankcase, and I'll cover that a little bit more in the tool side. And then I have an additional one that I mount right here. I can drill into that catch can, give me a couple extra ports to work with. And then I have my tube adapter, which is a straight uh, tail barb to tail barb. Now this is a stock valve cover. A lot of builders, in fact, most builders are going to be venting out one way to a catch can, but they're also gonna have an inlet coming in from the crankcase going into the valve cover so that your oil gets recycled. Going directly from the crankcase to the catch can with a large inner diameter tube is that it's taking a lot of pressure away, both from the internal combustion chamber when that uh, explosion goes all the way through the piston rings and creates more pressure, but also the vacuum when the piston is going back up to make sure that you get stabilization in there. So that's why I chose this and it seemed to be working all right. Now you choose the header you need for your application. This one is for an RB200 Coleman mini bike and I have an RB200 in a box. I'm gonna be doing some performance builds for that. But the muffler on here, another thing where Childish Concepts stepped in after I fried muffler after muffler uh, getting fried. I wanted to check the torque curve. 
Now with a high RPM engine, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't just pushing all of my power up at the, the, uh, the top end. I wanted to be able to pull in as much power as I could to the power curve, and I wanted a bit of an exhaust. Plus, I like my neighbors. So this is an RLV small hole muffler. I found the best price at childishconcepts.com. The manifold, I have found a trick, and to save money as well, a one inch drain pipe connector is a much better fit than the expensive alternatives of the Nibby Racing Coupler. Over time, they just don't hold on. There's also a, a bit of a disconnect in there. With this coupler, with the, uh, the, the just plumbing drain coupler, you can get a very nice fit between the carburetor and the manifold. With this type of a coupler, there's this weird bump on the inside. It does create a lot of turbulence, which could help with atomization, but it creates a lot of turbulence, and you're trying to suck in and pull through a lot of gas. It does have a bit of a flow restriction. About $5 for the one inch drain pipe connector. You do have to cut it down a little bit, you cut it down to size. This manifold here has a tapering that goes down to the engine and it fits very snug. You can get one that's just a straight up pipe that's welded to a flange, but you don't get uh, the port up on the top for future things or fuel pump or whatever you may be using it for, nitrous. And the flow just, it, there is some uh, impediment in the flow on that as well. These are one to one ratio champion rockers and they hold up a lot better than the stock ones when you're cranking up there at 9,000 RPMs. 22 pound valve springs. 22 pound valve springs. I will let you know that you will get valve float around 9,200 RPM and your engine will probably start to blow up between 92 and 9,500 RPM. You're gonna see some problems. This is where Childish Concepts came in and recommended a .060 shim. That is gonna make those 22 pound valve springs a little bit more stiff where I need them to prevent the engine from blowing up. Now, I'm using an eight degree offset uh, flywheel key and I'm using a PVL flywheel. A PVL flywheel is going to be a lot less expensive than a billet flywheel. A billet rod, another safety matter, uh, the billet rod replaces your stock rod and that stock rod has the tendency to snap at high speed. The air filter I used, you may notice, is very small compared to some of the other air filter alternatives. This is about $40 worth of air filters and adapters and whatever else to make it fit. This was $5. And you know what? I've seen quite a few other builders use the smaller air filters. You can upgrade, but this was cost savings and it seemed to work just fine. My engine still revved up there pretty hard slide type carburetor, Makuni knockoff. I chose this one over the alternative, even though it was about $9 more. They look the exact same in many respective ways, sans paint. It's a lot smoother operation in some of the parts when I have these two compared side to side. From a performance perspective, it is polished on the intake versus it is a little bit more drab on the intake. It's smooth, but it's not completely mirror shine polished. You will have to spend a little bit extra for a Jets kit uh, in order to get a 120, but it does come with a 115, and that 115 is gonna be running it a little bit more lean. Either way, you'll be getting up to about the 9,000 RPM range. So what is the overall cost of putting something like this together? and it's gonna run you about $400. That's right, most of that cost is gonna be coming from a safety factor here, a safety factor here, and a little bit of performance here and there. Bink, hey, let's talk about some tools now. I've got the tools laid out that I needed for this job, complete this job. First and foremost, I will suggest that you just simply pick up a full wrench set. For the carburetor, we have a nine millimeter, six millimeter, 17 millimeter, and then I have a uh, hex tool 
uh, Allen's key tool, and that is in metric as well. Flathead screwdriver, very small flathead screwdriver. I like the good old Ugga Dugga. Now, these can be a little bit more expensive. You do not need a good old impact wrench to take things off with a three quarter inch drive socket on there. But I really like in disassembling the flywheel to just hit it with an impact wrench. A variable speed drill, which is really nice. A quarter inch drive adapter and some extensions. That just makes things go faster. You don't need those, but personal preference. This is simply a large metal bar. Simply a closet rod, very nice shape to it. And with that 10 millimeter wrench, do not use the crescent side of a crescent wrench. If you're gonna be using an extension like that, you can snap that crescent side off. But if you're using the closed side, give it a little torque, it helps break free some of those bolts that are locked on there very hard. I guess I don't really know what everybody calls these. If you have a spe specific name, like uh, make it loose now, darn it bar, go ahead and throw that in the comments down below. I like hearing what people call these things. The flat nose pliers just has a lot of extra grip on things. And the flat nose pliers, if you have a zip tie, can also be used to clamp your fuel line. Safety goggles, safety glasses, spark plug wrench, a piston ring compressor. Make sure you know how to oil it. Uh, now this is not a scratch all, this is just simply a pick drill bit over here. And so I just used a 532nd on the underside of a gas cap and I punctured a hole in there. So you have a little bit more air draw and you don't have a vacuum holding your gasoline back. Now this is an 11 32nd bit that goes 3 8 inch deep. That's the, uh, the smaller one here. And you can see I use a little trick of just putting a little electrical tape around there and say that's how deep I want to drill it. This is the smaller of the drill bits. The larger of the drill bit is really just kind of a guide hole and that is a 3 8 inch drill bit and it only goes an eighth of an inch deep. I use to tap into the governor hole, the top governor hole here, and I put in a 90 degree brass tail barb. So it's gonna fit in as a guide and then you just crank it in. You are not tapping that hole, you're just using the brass to go into the aluminum. One of your most helpful companions in your engine assembly journey is gonna be Loctite. A magnetic reach tool can help you when you're dealing with your valves, feeler gauges, Digital caliper, uh, this particular one from Harbor Freight Tools, just note that you always have to hit that off button or the batteries wear out on it. Plastic gauge, there's green, there's red, get red. A quarter inch drive torque wrench is gonna be easy to find, but the 12 point quarter inch drive, quarter inch socket that you need for the, the uh, billet rod that's gonna be going into place, is not so easy to find. Locally, you typically have to purchase one, you have to find one online before you start your build. <laughs> Seven sixteenths inch tap. Um, quarter inch drive socket wrench. The sockets that I used would be a 12 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter socket, and an eight millimeter socket. The wrenches as well. Now these are crescent wrenches and I use an eight millimeter, a 10 millimeter, and a 14 millimeter. P220 grit sandpaper. The whack-a-mole hammer. I use the whack-a-mole. I only use one bit, although I do have a case of bits for a high-speed rotary tool. But that high-speed rotary tool with just a very flat cylinder on there and that helps me to do the clearancing for the cams. Last thing, aside from the paper towels, not really a tool, just kind of, it's gonna be dirty. Get yourself a waste basket or paper towel or such. There's gonna be oil around. Is the vise. Now, this can actually be one of the most problematic things for a person to get. Because not everybody has a workbench where they can secure the vise. What are your alternatives? Something other than the vise, because uh, the vise to me, I've just had one, and it's been really easy to work with. Maybe you've got a great suggestion or alternative. That's what I have. Hey, 
I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great day.